hello everyone good morning good afternoon depending on wherever you are located welcome to today's session on accelerating direct bookings through hotel e-commerce uh, i was wanting to give maybe just one more minute for more uh, of our registrants to join in so please bear with us uh, we'll just uh, start in a minute or so All right, so let's begin then. So uh, thank you again for joining in today. My name is Neha Ginoria and I will be hosting this session today along with my friend Aman Gupta. I will quickly uh, give a short introdu uh, introduction about myself and then go on to talk a little bit about this webinar. So Hello, I, sorry, can I uh, request everybody to kindly keep themselves on mute? I'm uh, Ah. Follow me. Can you make sure that everybody is on is muted? Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I'll begin again. I am Neha Ginoria, your host for today. I have been in the industry uh, for over thirteen years now, and currently heading up marketing for hotel technology leader Eat of Max Red Tiger. I would like to introduce this webinar and then pass on to my co-host Aman to take this discussion forward. As we all know, the travel industry is currently being in a steady recovery mode and uh, demand buildup is coming from domestic tourism. Through this webinar, we aim to discuss modern techniques and distribution tips that you as hoteliers can utilize to expand occupancy and grow online revenue as well as direct bookings. We have, an estimate, uh, we have an esteemed panel of speakers here who will be sharing their thoughts and experiences on the current scenario, as well as role of technology in helping achieve revenue targets. I cordially welcome our speakers on today's panel. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to all our audience members for taking their time to join us here today. This session is being streamed live on the Eat of Max YouTube channel. It is also being recorded and will be made available for future reference. We aim to make this an interactive discussion and I would request you to kindly use the chat box option to put in your questions for our speakers. We'll try and take them as soon as possible or in the second part of the session. Once again, I request all of you to kindly keep yourselves muted while the discussion is happening and use the chat box for any questions you want to send our way. I will now invite my co-host Aman to pl please introduce your yourself. Over to you, Aman. Thank you so much, Neha. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Aman Gupta. I'm based in Canada and um, heading business development in North America for Simple Hotel. Um, prior to Simple Hotel, I have been a hotelier um, for over 12 years where I've worked with various brands in England and India, handling operations, sales and marketing, business development, and quite a few more areas. Well, uh, I have with us Tarun Goyal, um, the founder and CEO of Simple Hotel. We have Prithvish Datta, Regional Sales Director, Ray Tiger, here at Max. And then we have Melvin, the Corporate Revenue Manager, um, Icon Premier Group, Hotel Group. So um, before we begin our discussion, may I please request our speakers to introduce themselves so that our audience are more aware of um, back. Tarun, over to you. Uh, kindly please introduce yourself. I think we are struggling a little bit with network connectivity, so kindly excuse uh, us on this. 
always happens at these times, right? The network connectivity. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, and it's an honor to be here with this panel, and I really look forward to a very insightful discussion. My name is Tarun Goel. I founded Simplotad about eight, nine years ago, and uh, it's a single purpose in life. Uh, you know, we saw, or I firmly believe that hotel bookings are moving online. I'm sure everybody here sort of observes that if you look at uh, the last uh, decade or so, the online share of bookings has jumped substantially, right? And uh, we started Simplotel with the purpose to help hotels capitalize on that trend and, and drive more online. In my previous life, I worked at Amazon and Expedia, and then I used to run uh, Mintra.com, which is a fashion portal in India. So I've been a e-commerce uh, professional. I think uh, I tell my team that I'm a one-trick pony. We've only done e-commerce all our lives, and that's one thing that we know well. Uh, so looking forward to some really interesting discussions here. Thank you so much, um, Tarun, for a great introduction. Um, over to you, Prithvish, if you like to introduce yourself, please. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Tarun. Thanks, Neha. Uh, thanks, Tarun, and thanks, Melvin, and all the representatives, all the you know, uh, person who have joined here. So myself, Prithvish, uh, I'm from Edith Max. I actually look after the entire, you know, uh, certain regions of Europe, entire Middle East and Africa. Uh, well, for my company, Yerif Max, uh, uh, I can say that we are proud to be the pioneers of the channel manager concept way back in 2001. And we are known for our Red Tiger suite of products, uh, catering to channel management, distribution, connectivity, in fact, rate intelligence solutions uh, for the hotels globally. Uh, we have recently expanded our portfolio to include CRS, booking engine, and website development to provide a cloud-based one-stop solution for the entire hospitality industry. Our products are currently being used by over 9,000 plus hotels globally, uh, including the likes of Accord, Louvre, Rotana, Kempinski, Nordic Choice, NH Hotel Group, along with various uh, mid-scale and independent properties. Uh, personally, I have been in this IT industry for over 15 years now, having a domain expertise in ERP solutions like SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, as well as various hospitality softwares, including PMSs as well. I have been with Erivmax for almost four years, and it's really been a great experience to see how the hotel technology you know, requirements have been evolving over the last few, uh, few years and have been evolved in the last one and a half years because we are living in an unprecedented time. Uh, thanks for having me today and uh, uh, for me on this panel and I look forward to have an interesting discussion. Over to you, Neha and uh, Aman. Thank you so much, Prithvish. Um, that was insightful. Um, Melvin? Can I please request you to introduce yourself now? Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, uh, Aman. And uh, hi, Neha. And thanks to the panelists, Tarun and Tipesh. Yeah, hi, I'm Melvin. I've joined uh, as a corporate revenue manager for the heading icon group of hotels, for the group of hotels. And I'm into revenue management uh, from past 12 years to uh, get a substantial growth and do the strategy to increase the profitability and long-term of asset value to the company. And to brief about the uh, company, Icon Hotels India is the perfect uh, fusion of both business and luxury. Uh, together we grow has been our motto and definitely being associated with Icon Hotels has been our pride. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melvin. I thank all our speakers um, again and welcome you all um, for this discussion. Um, over to you, Neha. Thank you so much, Aman. And uh, again, a very warm welcome to all our speakers and of course to all our audience members as well. So without further ado, let's just dive into the discussion. So I'll begin the discussion with uh, Tarun here. And uh, given that he comes from a very strong e-commerce background, we need to take advantage of that. So Tarun, my first question for you is, uh, we all know that you know uh, travel bookings are moving online and have been for the last quite many years. So what, according to you, are some of the strategies that you see can help hotels harvest this demand the most and also drive more direct bookings? Thank you, Neha. Um, 
thank you again for for having me here i think uh, if you just rewind by back, back life and you know a lot of us here were in college when the internet really sort of started at least personally you know netscape went public i think in the year 1995 or 1996 which is sort of the first big landmark that i remember of you know the internet being out there so if we think if we zoom out a little bit right everything that we are observing has been happening over the last two decades in our lifetimes right and i was going through my amazon shopping history and and i observed that i placed the first order in amazon in 1998 it was a book called juneteenth uh, and then the next order in 1999 all of that year i didn't place a single order and amazon was a bookstore at that time you know they would sell books and dvds right and in the year 2000 i bought my second book on amazon which was this vs naipaul's book uh, bend in the river not bend in the river uh, india something right so as a household you know we used to place an order every other year right was our average uh, and if you go to my amazon history now we're placing about an order and half a day right so in our lifetimes not even lifetimes in a quarter of our lifetimes right we've gone from a household that buys one item every other year to two orders uh, one and a half two orders every single day right and and it's just you know youtube facebook which have all become part of our lives today whatsapp didn't even exist until uh, you know a decade two decades ago right so i just wanted to sort of bring that into perspective that uh, this is what's happening i think when you look at the data for hotel bookings uh, google's research says that about 60% or 65% of all room nights worldwide are booked online now and about 80 85% is decided online so although people may not book online they're sort of figuring out where they want to book online right so that's sort of the the shift that has happened right in front of our eyes as we were growing up as we were sort of uh, becoming more mature professionals right so uh, you know we believe that the demand is out there it is online and to harvest this demand i think you know hotels need to like look at four different things largely right one is uh, there is this concept in the world that you know some of these channels hotels think of them as competitive right in our mind these channels are more collaborative than competitive so we need to put our best foot forward on all channels right i mean and i can give you a simple example see if you have a great trip advisor rating your ota bookings go up if you have a good website we have seen your ota bookings jump if you have a good ota listing your website bookings jump right so it's no longer the world where you know you can be happy with one channel you've got to be on all the channels and you've got to put your best foot forward in in all of these channels i know it's a bit of controversial there but uh, truly i don't think one channel can fill up a hotel room a room completely right the second thing uh, i think it is high time that hotels stop thinking about see we are we are more e-commerce professionals the rest of this will be more about you know direct versus the other channels there are other members on this panel who have far more experience on the other channels i'm going to focus a little bit more on on website the second thing is hotels need to stop thinking of their websites as brochures that are built once and they are done right they need to set aside a, a part of their marketing budget to drive this demand and uh, it's a joke you know sometimes we'll we'll be talking to some of our customers and they ask us you know when will our website be done and and we say hopefully never because it's not something that you know you you print once and you use it for next 5 years right if you are serious about driving online right your website needs to be updated regularly your hotel changes every day there are new things happening there there are new offers those better reflect on the website we are amazed at how much activity hotels have on their social media pages and their website is sort of frozen back in time uh when once it was built never never changed right the third thing is uh see gone are the days when people walk into the lobby and then decide where they want to stay right they form impressions of your hotel online so you know great content obviously wins out right great pictures we are a big fan of videos we believe a video is worth a thousand uh uh pictures and a picture is worth a thousand words right so by that definition you know a video is worth a million words right but i think what is also important is you need great technology that can deliver that video to the customer right so today if you look at youtube for example right you can load a youtube video on on slow networks you will find people on their mobile phones on 2g 3g 4g 5g whatever connections they have and they can experience a good youtube video right why do hotel websites struggle with delivering video content so you created this great awesome 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 video right and then but getting into your customer is a hard problem even in in you know last time i checked it was 2021 and and it should not be a problem right so the point is that 
hotels, in addition to great content, need to think about great technology because the great content can't get delivered to the customers. You can have the best videos in the world, but if it doesn't load on the mobile phone of your user, it's sort of, uh, you're not getting an ROI on that investment. Right? The third piece is, I think we need to learn from the big guys, right? And hotels really need to think like an OTA. And if you, there's an art and a science to it, right? I mean, if you go to uh, booking.com, if you go to a make my trip, for example, and if you search for an air ticket from Delhi to Bangalore or Delhi to New York, and if you don't make a booking, you'll see the OTA start chasing you, right? I mean, you'll get a mailer from them saying, hey, you know, here's 500 bucks off for your ticket, right? Here is uh, book directly with us and, and, and get this. Uh, the, the experience is extremely seamless. Like, you know, booking is name, email address, phone number, you know, if you don't ask for your mother's name, your father's name, your this, that, right? I mean, it's a very seamless booking flow and uh, it loads fast, right? You can offer pay at hotel on low occupancy days. There's a lot that unfortunately, you know, driving direct bookings is dead by a thousand paper cuts, right? And, and, and you got to get all of these things right to drive direct, right? So I think the third point is that hotel need to start thinking and behaving like OTAs if they're serious about driving the, the direct uh, business, right? The last point is, you know, there is this fallacy and I think uh, Neha, you know, part of it is, you know, as technology professionals that have caused this to happen. And, you know, I think I take blame for this also, right? We think of our website and booking engineers as two different things in the world, right? Now, if you go to an Amazon or if you go to a, like, like when I was at Amazon, right? We would not think of like, oh, there's a website and there's a booking engine, right? I mean, it's just, or when you're at Mintra, right? You would not think of these as two different things. There was one seamless experience. If you talk to your guests, they don't say that, you know, we're making a booking on your booking engine. They say we made a booking on your website, right? However, you know, we've created this Chinese wall between the website and the booking engine, right? Somehow there is a catalog over here that we want the customer to experience. And then, you know, he goes to a store next door to buy our rooms, right? And we believe that that experience is broken, right? When we think of um, an e-commerce experience, it needs to be a, a fully seamless experience that that the that the guests sort of experiences because they don't think of it as two different things, right? So to summarize, you know, I think there are four things that uh, uh, hotels uh, need to do. One is be active on all channels. No one channel uh, is healthy, right? You want all your channels to work for you. You need great content, but you need a great technology that can deliver that content to your customers, just like YouTube does. You need to really think like OTAs, right? I mean, some of these things that seem silly, like, you know, putting messages on your booking engine that says, you know, book risk free, cancel until August 15th, right? Makes a huge, huge, huge difference in your conversion. And the fourth thing is like, you know, don't think of your website and, and booking engine as two different things. It's one and the same, right? And your customers need a seamless experience, right? You click on a book now button and you go to uh, a completely different third party site is not an experience we'd like to offer to our customers. I think you're on mute, Neha. We're not able to hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, yes, yeah. we can. I'm sorry. I was struggling to unmute myself for some reason. Aman, uh, some very, very interesting points. I frankly loved the way you, you started out with that example on Amazon and you know, uh, that actually made me reflect back and think about how we started, you know, online purchases and stuff and really very, very good analogy on how, you know, it used to be one purchase a year to possibly more than two nowadays. I mean, it, it is a little uh, embarrassing to say that there are times when we might be making like multiple purchase purchases within a day in a household. I mean, it could be two per member for that matter. So absolutely. And on your point, I have a very quick question here uh, again, and I invite all the other panel members here, Melvin, Prithvish, Aman to uh, chip in. Uh, but one point here on what you mentioned, and we obviously take the onus as uh, technology providers. You mentioned about the last point where, you know, when a booking engine and a website, how we in the industry differentiate it as two different things. And whenever uh, we as a traveler, if we are trying to book a hotel room and we click on, you know, the dates and book now, it takes us to a third party site. So uh, is there also a way that it could be done seamlessly on the hotel website itself? I'm not really a very tech, uh, techie, a tech savvy person. So uh, that's why this, uh, this question to you. Tarun. Oh, you're not able to unmute. Follow me. Can you please make sure the panelists can unmute themselves? Yeah. 
So uh, thank you, Neha, for that question. So maybe I should have gone a little bit more into detail. See, the thing is, uh, it's about the experience, right? So, and and I think this is where the hotel industry wins out. Like when I, I love staying in hotels. We are like travel junkies. If you have a weekend free, we check into the hotel next door, right? When you walk into a hotel, right? The experience is seamless, right? There's a nice front desk that checks you in, right? They don't uh, send you to one place to, to figure out the rooms and then go to another place to check out and then a third place to make the payment, right? I mean, some old times the airlines used to do that. I don't see them doing that anymore. But hotels, you know, really, really understand the customer. And I think they, 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 they really nail it well, right? And if you look at the, the tech somehow, right, is because there have been different providers who do website and booking engine, they've evolved differently. For example, you know, if you want to see the price of a hotel, you have to go to the booking engine, right? Why is that? Why can't we make the prices available on the website itself, right? We know a customer has come, come back because there's rampant shopping happening, right? We know what he's searched on the booking engine, but we make him go back to the booking engine and start a search again. Why not match him to say, hey, you know, we know you, Neha, great, great to see you back. Here is some way you can continue, right? Why not have it, simple things like why not launch it on your own domain, right? Why do you have to go to, when you click a book now, go to a third-party domain, which honestly freaks you out, right? In, in all this data security thing, you know, I don't know who I'm interacting with right now, right? So I think from a tech perspective, it's uh, it's there. I mean, you know, it's 2021 now. It's not like, uh, and, you know, you see the Amazons and the Mintras and the Booking.com of the world have solved this problem. It's just that because of us technology people, you know, we've created two different products and, and you know, we're trying to break down that barrier. Like, you know, we Internally in, in our company, if people talk about website and booking engine as two different things, we start frowning. It's not, hotels may think about it still like that, but the consumers don't. And that's what matters. Right? Did I answer your question there? Yes, yes. I think you answered me very well. Thank you. Thank you so much for elaborating, Tarun. Yes, yeah, so to add more, sorry, Neha. Uh, Please, so add, yes, Prithvi. To add more, you know, uh, to Tarun's point. Uh, today's generation, like we are... When, when he said about, you know, uh, that the internet thing, the net of things started in way back in 1995. I was in class nine, probably. Okay. And uh, in 2000, I gave my, you know, uh, 12, right? Uh, having said that right now, most of our generations are in our mid thirties, mid forties, right? Because of the pandemic situation uh, and when, when, you know, restrictions are somewhat flex flexible right now with the government all around the world people are actually you know uh, mostly uh, you know emphasizing on drive to travel correct what i am seeing right now drive to travel you know not not elaborated foreign trips nobody is racing for that okay and it would be always it's always a short staycations it's always short staycations that i am seeing right now people are going to Lodavla, people are going to Diga, people are going to their Mahabaleshwar, etc., etc. Right? I'm not talking about the film stars. <laughs> so, so basically, you know what happened? How the hotel can actually make their search organic? How would they do that? Uh, what are the tools? Like Tarun was actually explaining about the four strategies, five strategies. But as a whole, you know. Booking engine is, is definitely a source uh, from which the travelers like us, who are who are uh, into Facebook, who are into you know uh, into into uh, Twitter, into LinkedIn. So the at the same point of time, the hotels needs to think uh, you know can they see me? Are we visible on the social media platforms? Are we whatever rank uh, in in Google search engine? And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, and we need to, the hotels need to make themselves visible uh, in terms of, uh, you know, their website, apart from having a booking engine, which is embedded into the website. That's what Tarun was actually highlighting. We always embed the booking engine into the website. <laughs> so as you can understand, you know, uh, you know, so this is the point, but today's generation is somewhat very, you know, tech savvy, they understand what to do, what not to do, how to reserve booking as they are very smart. And this is helping the hoteliers, you know, I'm, I'm seeing certain cases that I could be, you know, developing upon, uh, you know, uh, at a later stage. Over to you, Neha, over to you, Tarun. Thank you, Prithvish, thanks so much. Aman, do you want to uh, yeah, say something? I, I mean, I just uh, a quick line on that one. I mean, 
hoteliers really spend a lot of time, like Karun said, on their guest experiences, you know, from check-in to check-out and seamless guest experience. And a true hotelier would know what a guest is doing in their hotel. Unfortunately, the same thing is not happening on the online side. I mean, they're clueless. If, if you ask a hotelier, you know what your people are doing on your website? Uh, probably browsing. I mean, that's what the general uh, scenario is, but that's not true. I mean, you can understand so many patterns and that can really help uh, hotels uh, fight this, um, you know, uh, uh, the entire uh, uh, booking site. And with the COVID, I'm sure the competition is even tougher. So I think it's high time that hoteliers need to understand and not be behind on the technology part. So um, just with that, uh, let me move on to the uh, next question, which, uh, which is for Melvin. Um, mm. So uh, Melvin. Um, yes, sir. So for hoteliers uh, or for hotel companies, why is it important um, for a good distribution mix? And why is it important to monitor all the channel partners um, for optimizing revenue? Uh, yes, the first point which I want to answer is why we definitely need a distribution mix. As even Tarun added that point, uh, we have to first, you have to have that uh, maintain a healthy business relation with all the online partners and to avoid the dependency on to one particular hotel. If you just see for few, for one of the hotel or most of the hotels, what they do is they keep only one funnel open. And if that gives more and they're well satisfied, but my way of working and the revenue management is, and it has to be a same distribution mix from all the other channels as well. It is not only to one particular OTO, okay, the hotel, we are getting a maximum business from that channel. We are just very much happy, but it should be I, from the brand website, from the other channels, we have to give leverage to them as well. So that in turn will give more revenue that most of the hotels which currently are not following. And yes, and how to revenue optimize? Yes, there are times where the OTA partners tend to participate uh, in the small practices of giving direct discount to the guest. So where in turn, we have a revenue loss on direct brand website. Assume that, that example, if an, uh, a 4,000 rate is on our OTAs and the brand website are featuring of around 5,000. So definitely there is a huge loss with the brand website. To incur the loss, to avoid those losses, we definitely need to monitor all the channels for the revenue optimization channel. Awesome. So I, I really agree what uh, Melvin said. I mean, um, all the hoteliers, hotel companies need to have all their funnels open and have all the channels open, even if they are getting whatever percentage of the business. It's very important for hotels to understand and to have themselves uh, have their presence all across all the channels. And definitely, um, and then they, they need to uh, prioritize and optimize um, to what channel they're getting more bookings and how do they ensure to optimize more revenue, especially in these um, uh, tough times where, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of hotels have lost their businesses and now it's the time to optimize. So I think it, uh, the role is even more critical in that sense. So um, I would like just um, ask, um, uh, rest of the speakers to uh, add on in this one yeah, so you know we had an interesting observation so you know i think what you also need to do as a hotelier is understand the strengths of each of these channels right so for example when we were at expedia uh, we knew for india we con contributed a lot of us customers right and uh, versus make my trip perhaps is stronger at getting you domestic customers right so if you can truly understand your customer needs right what you can also do is the kind of offerings you offer on on these channels become uh, very interesting. So, you know, what does what does a customer from the US need in India versus what does a customer from India need in India? And if you understand those needs better, and if you're able to customize your listings, and, and the same thing applies to your website as well, right? I mean, see, it's, it's marketing at the end of the day, and it all begins with knowing your customers and knowing which channels target those customers, right? So it was pretty, if you 
also think slightly deeper and, and it's not that hard. Like, you know, when we sit down with the sales team at a hotel, they, they know this, right? I mean, you ask them, like there's this hotel of ours in Goa and, and when you ask them, you know, why do foreigners come here? Oh, they love the beach, right? And why do Indians come here? Oh, they love the swimming pool and they love the food, right? Now imagine if you knew this, right? And, and your make my trip listing, you would change it to have the first picture to be a, a, a swimming pool and then food, right? Versus for foreigners, you may want to show like this beach, right? So it is, it's interesting that, you know, in the offline world, we tend to understand these things and we tend to implement this. Like when a foreigner calls, you know, you start talking about the beach. But when we're thinking of these channels, we forget that what is the unique thing that the channel brings uh, to us, right? And if you can think a bit more about that and figure out and customize your, your listings and your offers and packages, maybe you'll get a, a bit more result. And, this, and the same thing applies to your website. Like, you know, if there are, if you're targeting foreigners, if you're targeting banqueting, you know, make sure you have pages that are set aside for that. There's a customer of ours in Mumbai and they wanted to get Japanese travelers. And we created a couple of pages there that talk about why the hotel is the best hotel for Japanese, right? And, and in SEO, it starts ranking, you start getting that business, right? So it is, it seems commonsensical, but sometimes, you know, it is, we just don't take the time. We get into this execution mode. So, so my very strong suggestion is, you know, like spend an hour thinking about what your customer segments are, what channels they are, what they want, and map it to your channels and, and put your best foot forward there and you'll see results. Very valid point, um, Tarun, I should say. Um, would anyone else like to add anything? Yeah, to, thanks, thanks, Aruna. Thanks, Tarun and Milvin. To add more, uh, you know, so booking Expedia Agoda, we know, they can give you the reservations. But what about when, when we are all in the pandemic situation, right? The flights, the international flights are closed, right? Concentrate more on the regional channels. What I've seen and experienced talking to my Middle East you know, hotels. Uh, OTAs like Rahlat International, OTAs like Hypergest from Israel, uh, OTAs from, because Israel has a, you know, somewhat, you know, uh, kind of a, you know, low travel restrictions in UAE, having their boundaries open. And about like Sira, which is Al Hukair, Al Dayar group, sorry. So they are actually getting, and as I said in my previous conversation, is drive to travel, right? Short staycations. So these kind of OTAs are actually producing for the hotels. Yeah. So my advice, my suggestion would be at this point of time, booking Expedia Aguda is all right. They are making, they are giving you 50% of uh, your revenue or reservations. But what about the rest 50% or maybe what about the rest 20 to 30%? You can make it from your regional channels, highlight them, concentrate upon them, focus upon them. So it's my, my suggestion would be to the hoteliers. Thanks. Thanks. Over to you, Amit and Naya. That's a great suggestion, uh, Prithvish. Um, before we just move on, I would just request all the audience, if you have any questions, to please use the chat option and um, just jot down your questions over there, and we will cover up all the questions in our second half of the session. So over to you, Neha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aman. I actually see a question coming in from one of our audience members. And because it relates to what we have been discussing just now, maybe we can put that across to our speakers at this point. So the question is from Philip. And uh, he asks, how important is it to know the cost of guest acquisition per channel and use the best channels rather than all channels available? So I think we've partly covered what uh, Philip is trying to ask. I, I put this question to any of you who want to take this up and answer. Feel free. So, you know, I can take a stab at it though. You know, we, we are very focused on direct. So where typically the cost of acquisition doesn't come into play. See, ultimately at the end of the day, it's a business, right? And whether it is an Expedia, whether it's a Mintra, whether it's a Make My Trip, whether it's your hotel, it has to make PL sense for you right now. The way I would approach it is if you're a small inventory hotel where you can fill it up quickly, you can be super selective. You know, we have this uh, really nice boutique bungalow type properties that have come up in Goa right after the pandemic where, you know, you can book the entire bungalows. They're seeing fairly high end, right? Very clear. They don't want to get into distribution. Their ADRs are very high and they're able to fill the rooms, right? I mean, a lot of celebrities, Bollywood, et cetera, is, is in there and, and word of mouth and website sort of gets them enough. And, and they don't need the more expensive channels. Now, imagine if you're a 300, 400 room city center hotel in Delhi, right? I mean, uh, you have to work harder to, to get it, right? So I think, you know, cost of acquisition is real, right? It's, it's your PNL. At the end of the day, 
it's your business and it's your your pnl um i think there are several factors that go into it a can the channel get you customers that that you want b is that channel uh doing it at a cost effective manner c can you use that channel to get you the customer and then later convert them into direct right uh, i don't think it is in my mind there's a simple like yes no answer to this question but it's a interesting business question like if you know that you want to target uh if you're based out of bombay and you're targeting americans not in today's pandemic world but in normal course it'll be silly not to go after expedia because you know they are pretty strong they're all booking.com right versus if you like there's a hotel of ours in sri lanka and they're very clear that they want europeans right and at that point you know some of the channels don't make as much sense right so it's a combination of you know costs the reach that the channel gets you whether it makes sense for you your inventory how you're able to fill up those inventory etc right so again sorry i gave a long answer probably not my specialty but that's how i would think about it no i think uh, tarun you made a very valid point and to add on to that i think somewhere uh, one of course is the channel part and the second is understanding the channel performance also like you know how do you even know which channels are performing for you and which are not so i think somewhere technology plays a part in you know giving you like a birds eye view on how your channels are performing in different markets and then accordingly uh, helping you take a conscious decision on if you want to cut down certain channels or you know spend less on more or less on certain channels so with that point uh, i was thinking prithvish if you want to uh, maybe chip in a little bit on this question and also further uh, adding on to this question uh, i would like to ask you what are the technology tools and systems that hotels can you know uh, use to that can help accelerate their revenue and also you know adding on to like i said philip's question how could they monitor channels better to make a uh, informed decision yeah thanks neha yeah thanks philip for the question as well uh, well uh, for your question specifically philip so are you using any kind of technology solution that can actually give a metrics how your channels are doing how which channel is profitable for me and which is not if you find that you know as i was talking about the mix of regional channels along with booking expedia international channels so you need to understand what profitability you are making from your different channels and then you can pick and choose and you know actually allocate your inventory uh, you know accordingly to those channels maybe you can for the time being you can stop the channels that are not producing for you it's very simple now coming back to the uh, hope my answer you know uh, you know simple simplifies your question uh, having said that uh, coming to neha's question so even before the pandemic what we have seen we were actually seeing a shift you know towards a cloud based and self service technology and this transition has been accelerated by the covid 19 as customers all around the world they expect a very contactless experience through how they stay and which emphasizes on health and safety and the reduction in face to face interactions uh, you know while they also expect uh, you know a high level of service there are many you know uh, technology systems that can actually help the hotels to accelerate their revenue but at the same point of time i would like to mention some of the which i have outlined uh for example like the channel manager obviously for the the most important is the for updation of availability rates restriction inventory you know and a seamless flow of reservations or cancellations or any kind of updations directly to the pms without any manual intervention from various demand sources be it otas be it your booking engine be it your meta search like google hotel ads shivago trip advisor whatever you know and apart from that and also uh, you know if i if i highlight uh, to philips question that you know the the how how can you identify different channels who are actually giving you the profit yes the channel manager can do that moving forward the best option is to get a booking engine integrated with your brand website for aiding direct you know revenue and uh, you know you can do customized once you can do multiple reservations from you know single page or single card multiple activities like you know promotions 
and it would be fully secured and integrated with the payment gateway you know solutions uh, cloud based uh, you know pms for managing booking data occupancy status and rates uh, also with the guest review management system or a reputation management tool very important now today's generation is always on mobile right and they are on google plus they are on tripadvisor trivago expedia at any point of time anything bad means your bad reviews means your bad business even in this pandemic situation so the guest review management solution will actually help you to understand what reviews you are getting what are the metrics on which kpis you are getting what are the sentimental analysis you are getting like neutral positive you know uh, negative on which kpis like your uh, you know uh, your operations your housekeeping your uh, kitchen not taken you know restaurants etc your food and beverage etc etc apart from that there is another one that i would like to actually you know uh, include upon is your rate intelligence and business analytics how you are actually competing with your hotels of the same category in different vicinity and what is your production visibility okay on a real time basis and apart from that due to the pandemic situation last but not the least it's the contactless check in check out or in room ordering so these are some of the you know technology tools that i think at this point of time you know is very much valuable to to the you know hoteliers right now globally over to you neha over to you aman thanks i i just like to add, add one more thing sorry so you know i think we've talked a lot about online channels etc right i think one of the things that we at simple hotel believe is that the phone channel in a hotel is often neglected as well and it's amazing how much that can produce for for especially uh, if you are a chain if you are leisure if you are luxury there are a lot of phone calls like we've done some uh, analysis of you know about 20 10 to 20% of the people that end up on your website actually end up calling the hotel and uh, person you know we called up about 100 of these hotels just to see what the experience is and and the back and forth is i mean i'd encourage everybody who's running a hotel here to make a call to their front desk and see how those calls are handled right and in our mind that's a huge opportunity there's some simple tools that are out there that can help you convert a lot of these but that is very high it's direct in that sense it is manual because it does help you uh, it is there's no intermediary there but that experience even with some of the larger brands you know we were booking a holiday in goa and we called up one of the large brands and the experience was just the amount of back and forth that happens uh, typos in in the quotes that go out etc so that's another channel that don't lose sight of that that's a direct channel and that's a very important part uh, and often relegated to the front desk that is also checking in customers doing 500 other things right and we expect them to follow up and do those things so anyways that's uh, just thought that that was another piece of the puzzle that uh, we feel strongly from a direct lens uh, uh, that you know the the phone is a big uh, big channel for a lot of our customers and if you're getting a lot of inbound customers so are chats so international i know right now with pandemic it's sort of off but international customers don't like to call they like to chat anyways uh, thought i'd add that over there to the mix tarun a very very interesting point and i want to actually add on to your point on a personal experience so and mostly in india i have experienced this i have not really tried it in other locations but if you get a price on any of these channels like uh, you know expedia booking and if you call a hotel in india i mean some hotels at least that i have tried you know even even if you ask them to give you a better rate maybe not matching to what you get on these channels but even at par or a little higher and you are okay to book direct you know i have been turned away i have been told that why don't you go to the channel and book because it's there so just go and book it there i said you'll have to pay commission i mean why do you want to pay that commission instead you know you give me a certain amount of that benefit and you take this booking direct so i think there's a lack or a disconnect in terms of uh, staff training at the front desk because they've not been trained to you know take on this piece of direct business and not give that chunk directly to these online channels Correct. So uh, this again is something that uh, you know hotels definitely need to look at. Yeah, I think yeah, you're totally I, right. You know, it is a matter of process, tools, and training, right? I mean, it mm -hmm. is. Uh, if you're serious about driving direct, you know, the front desk honestly does not even have the tools, right? I mean, yes. Think about what the front desk has to do, right? I mean, it's probably one of the hardest jobs in a hotel industry. Right? I'm sitting there, I'm tied to my chair, I can't go out. If I have to take a bathroom break, I have to get somebody else there, right? 
there are people waiting on me and and it's my fault because three people have decided to check in at the same time and the third guy is yelling at me because it took time to check in at the same time the phone is ringing and we expect these people to be superheroes right and we don't give them any tools like you know i'm negotiating and at the same time i'm going to send them a payment link and so to be fair right i mean i think it's one of the hardest jobs out there i mean uh, i i'm amazed at how i think running a hotel is hard and being at the front desk is even harder right because yeah, you're sort of at the receiving end of a lot of these things and you know honestly we've not equipped them with the tools and the tech that they need to sort of do their jobs well sometimes right and so it's a combination of you know policy process like training but also tools i believe that that these guys need to actually really get take care of your guests well right uh, i would like to add on with the neha's thing because i was just handling this central reservation team so what about uh, my experience over there is i have always briefed to the team that see most of the guests those times uh, few guests will not be uh, comfortable in uh, giving the credit card online so what they do is they'll just call up the central reservation team to make the booking at the same time they're too smart they will just check the online rate as well so what my team will try hard to do is try to convert that on the direct booking take the details and confirm the booking yes the point which neha added is yes because we don't want to leave it because if it that goes through to the online we incur in paying the commissions to them rather than giving that commissions to them we will just give that some discount to the guest and take the direct booking so there is no commissions to pay it so handling that reservation most of our calls rather coming uh, through the online will start directly coming to the offline as well that will give more add on to our uh, hotels with a better arr which is coming through the other channels as well absolutely melvin absolutely awesome i mean all these points just uh, took me uh, back to the days when i used to manage the uh, hotels i mean I, in hotels i mean all hotels would agree you know if within three rings the call is not picked up you've lost a business and, and that's pretty true and uh, uh, like tarun also mentioned and uh, melvin so um, or even neha so a guest probably calls hotels several times and do rate shopping and he would try his best to get the best rates and because there is no singularity and everyone is like doing their own stuff probably the guest would have about 10 different rates from 10 different people about the same room in the same hotel so it's very um, uh, crucial that the technology helps hoteliers in um, in having a uh, you know in sorting this out and having uh, all of the team members on the same path so and and thank you so much for the space of covering the Uh, you know the 360 degree of uh, technology from pre arrival you know to post departure and how technology can really you know help hoteliers and in the transformation of business you know i mean there are there are a whole bunch of hoteliers here and i think some of our customers as well it would be great to i think anybody out there i know i see a bunch of uh, people that you know known faces that anybody want to share anything about this about you know how you guys handle the online offline how you're driving direct etc because you know we are sitting here uh, you know honestly we've learned a lot from you guys uh, because you know we are all it is at simple hotel we are all tech people and uh, you know all our learnings about hotel have come from you is there anybody out there in this audience would like to just uh, chime in would love to get insights from you guys as well i've always learned from you and uh, would be great to hear from you as well If you are unable to unmute yourself, guys, just maybe drop a chat, and we'll uh, unmute you uh, if you're wanting to speak, say anything. We see somebody uh, unable to mute. So uh, let me just check. Hishita Subba, give us a minute. I will see if we can unmute you. Follow me. Can you check if you can unmute? Heshita Subba. Yeah. Hi, morning, guys. Hi, Hi Heshita. Good to good to talk to you again. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Ah, uh, sorry, you are muted again. Ah, uh, can you unmute yourself? No. Yeah. 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 We can hear. Yeah, you. I'm audible now. Yeah. Okay, great. 
So, uh, I mean, I've been listening to all the inputs from my fellow colleagues and of course, Tarun and Neha and Aman. So, uh, yes, I, I understand that, you know, uh, rate is a fight these days and we need to uh, control that. I mean, we as revenue heads, I think rate is primarily what we are all looking at. But uh, I think with rate, I think your strategy needs to work where uh, the team needs to be trained on the bar and the bar needs to be quoted. Unlike what Melvin said that, you know, uh, you know, people go online, they, they check, they come, they argue. I think for the time being, if as a fraternity, we, we adapt to the bar, you know, that is something that is going to help. And I think uh, now that... Uh, uh, with this, the acquisition that we have done of let, you know, now we are, we are 50 hotels now and trust me, the strategy works wonders. I mean, Tarun and his team have been a tremendous support. I've been keeping them awake till late nights, but uh, it's, it's been a wonderful journey and trust me, that is the way forward because what should not happen is this, this rate fight, you know, should not happen. As a fraternity, we really need to stand by each other now. And we, we need to decide uh, that our, I think our industry has really suffered a lot in the last 18 to 24 months. And if this time we don't come together, trust me, it's, it's going to be difficult. Only if we hold our, our teams together, you know, and, and just, just work a way out. And, and I'm sure with, with the kind of occupancies and ARRs that the leisure segment is seeing right now, the business segment is also going to bounce back sooner than what we expect. So we, we need to stick to a couple of things and uh, stick to it as a team, you know, not, not individuals. So yes, we really, really do that. And uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the phone calls and these things, I think occupancy and rates need to go hand in hand. And that's what is touch wood the the mantra that at least my group has been working on and uh, we're doing really well on that. So yes, ARRs, I think, I don't think we should actually stress about ARRs for the next two years at least. Please don't stress yourselves out. <laughs> Look at occupancy. Let the thing come back. Then the footfalls happen and I'm sure we'll bounce back. So here's wishing everybody all the best and thanks a million, Tarun. It's been work. It's been great working with you. Thank you, Ishita. I think, you know, we can... We can build all the tech in the world, but we need users like you who take it to the next level and, and use it well. So appreciate your drive and driving direct. We, we love working with you. Thank you, Hishita, for your inputs. Uh, it was really great hearing from you. Aman, do you want to move on to the next one? Sure. Um, thank you, Hishita. So I'm just moving on. Uh, next question is to Tarun. Uh, you've already covered a part of it, but um, from Sorry, Aman, you're on mute somehow. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just repeat. So, um, Tarun, the next question is um, uh, for you. Um, and you've already covered a part of it, but uh, probably uh, we would like to hear a bit more uh, in depth uh, about this. So why is seamless integration um, between technology platforms important for hoteliers? And how can it impact their business? Also, um, how is brand website playing a bigger role um, in the hotel booking process? So, you know, I, I think it's a great question, Aman, right? I mean, I think uh, I know the shoes that uh, each one of you are in there, right? I mean, as we run an organization here and we are also constantly making technology choices, right? And you end up with technology that is fully seamless and you get, you know, everything in one place. and. Uh, and that is attractive because now you don't have to like do all the plumbing and, you know, uh, the piece. But at the same time, you know, there are places where you want to innovate. And I'm going to give you an example of, of our website. It's slightly technical. I'll try to simplify it, right? See, we use Amazon Web Services for everything, practically everything, right? But for image management, we find another service which is based out of Israel called Cloudinary that delivers images really fast to our customers, right? And what we do is at there are times because load time is so important to our customers' websites, right? We make a choice, right? Uh, to go with a different provider there and integrate it, right? So now imagine if cloud in, now AWS has a similar service, but if they were to come to us and say, hey, you must use our service because we don't integrate with this cloud energy, who does better than us, right? That would sort of not enable us to give the right experience to our customers. Right? So my point of view is that there's always technology. What you need to do is you need to figure out what is differentiating for you, 
right? And uh, you will find wide technology that does everything and probably not as deep. And you will find deep technology that does a few things very well. My suggestion is go for wide technology that does for all your common things, right? That are non-differentiators for you. But for things like if you're really focused on driving direct or something, right? And if that is on your agenda, then maybe you need a specialized piece of technology. Now, when you're doing tech selection, you know, at least one of the factors that go into our selection as a business when we are doing our tech selection is that, you know, how interoperable this technology is, right? Is this a provider that has a walled garden that says, if you're going to use my tech, you're forced to use all of my tech, or is the provider willing to tomorrow, if something else comes up, that is really interesting. Will this vendor be open to integrating with them, right? We belong in the, in the second category where, you know, we believe that hoteliers should have choice and integration should not be a sort of a way to lock in, right? I mean, people should use our website and our booking engine because they're both the best out there, right? Not because our website cannot work with any other booking engine, right? So I think uh, I would look at integration is important because there will be times in your life, in your business where you want specialty type things because something is so important for us. Load time is that on the hotel websites. And therefore we've even gone beyond AWS, which, you know, is the worldwide leader in cloud, but there are these really nice companies who solve that problem even better, right? And you will be faced with similar choices, right? There will be some business goals, some business agenda of yours, for example, to drive direct or, or personalization or something like that, right? Where you will need a specialty. So when you're looking at vendors, uh, you know, our philosophy is that you should choose our products because they're the best, not because we don't work with somebody else, right? So that's that's how it is. I think about the problem. I think there are others on the panel who also represent a bunch of technologies. I know Erev Max has been very nice. You know, we've been integrated for some time, and uh, with a firm belief that you know, let's let's give our customers a choice, right, and let them choose uh, because not the same hammer and the same nail is not the best for everyone, right? And frankly you guys are owners of business and you guys should be able to figure out the best, best solutions. And uh, so that's how it is, you know, that's my take on, on interoperability. Like, you know, it's hard to get locked into a platform and then you find yourself in this box and not being able to do anything else, right? I would avoid that if possible. Did I answer your question, Aman, or was there something more that you were looking for? Oh, your... definitely. I mean, uh, while you were talking, I just, um, there was an instance where we were stuck uh, back in the days uh, with a with a technology who were probably not able to integrate with other technology which were you know really good in their fields and that kind of limited us into exploring better ways of doing business so i think uh, uh, really well said on on the part that it's critical for hotels to um, choose a technology but in the longer run it's even more critical that the technologies is open and is open towards other technologies to have that integration because I mean, it, the world is uh, uh, changing very rapidly in terms of technology and more um, open technology, it will be even better for their businesses. Absolutely, I agree with what uh, both you Tarun and Aman mentioned. And in fact, on this point, I wanted to bring Melvin into the discussion here and you know understand a little bit from him as well because like Tarun, you mentioned, uh, Eat of Max and Simplotel obviously are integrated and we work very closely uh, on different products. So Melvin being a common customer and <laughs> being the actual user of, of this integration and benefiting out of it. So maybe if he can throw some light on how, you know, integrated technology platforms are useful for hotels and also further as to what are some of uh, the ways uh, to, you know, attract and get more footfalls on the brand website from a direct booking perspective. So two-part yeah. question, Melvin, for you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I agree. Uh, to get the more football as well, first, in case we have to use that right technology. As I said, currently, I'm happy that uh, I got uh, the Simple Hotel as well as the Ray Tiger uh, for, for her hotel. So I'm pretty much happy in using this. Our time, mainly the time consumed is very less. And we have a lot of intelligence with these softwares, which helps me to think what I need to do it on the other aspect. Example, to get more footfalls on the brand website, I've seen the other hotels where they don't use the technology, like how simpler hotels are being there. They have, uh, once if they try to make a booking on their brand website, I've seen many things, I mean, recent also, I don't want to mention which brand it is. It hardly takes a step of seven to eight steps to make a booking, but ours is, it has to be 
nowadays most of the guests will not have that much of time to get into the brand website and i mean just uh, do seven to eight times to uh, make a simple booking whereas the other otas will give uh, just hardly three to four steps whereas we have got that leverage in the simple hotel having that uh, quick uh, enough to make a booking at the same time how to get more footfalls yes by currently i i advise the other uh, hotels to follow to provide a cash back to the guests i mean uh, i agree initially there were the uh, before years together those discounts were working out rather we if we have to do anything or if we have to uh, do any online uh, things everything rather discount i prefer is only the cash back so that cash back will be used within a hotel it won't go anywhere else so that is the best i suggest the other hotels to use so these guests can utilize this cash back either on the uh, meal part or on the spa or if you have on the laundry apart from this uh, we have to give the flexibility which we don't give it on the otas the early check in and the late check out as well as the free room upgrade on the brand website which at least will help us in getting more footfalls on the brand website but once we do this we also have to ensure this is been marketed well on the insta facebook and on the whatsapp it's not only that, that you just uh, update this promotion on the brand website and you just wait for the footfalls to come you have to make this marketing well great thank you thank you so much melvin for for those inputs and for for sharing your do you also want to add anything with regards uh, you know uh, the the channel bit like you know how you're optimizing on the ota side as well obviously we focus more on the direct bookings but in terms of like you know optimizing uh, the overall sales mix yeah, is there any yeah, particular currently, strategy yeah 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 currently as i said that uh, we are using this uh, rate uh, gain and it is just prior to this definitely we were using the other competition uh, competitor of channel manager you meant rate hotel. tiger is it sorry no 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 i said rate tiger i'm just happy okay. i mean prior to Very, rate tiger right uh, yeah i mean uh, we were not happy we were not happy with the connection because the rate flow was not happening properly and there were a lot of disparities which were and there were a lot of disconnections which as a revenue guy i will not be able to do it at the time if i uh, load a rate and i will be under assumption okay the same rate has been floated across the online channel but in rate again that's not the way which you are working there is a lot of good support which we get from your uh, team as well and this is very easy to use compared to the other so i highly recommend for the other hotels to use rate type awesome that's really <laughs> like live plan recommendation i was not expecting something like this but thank you so much uh, melvin and we hope we continue to you know provide you uh, great products and awesome support thank you thank you thank, thank you melvin you're great to working uh, it's awesome to work with you and i think your hotel is like 500 meters from my house so it's a very <laughs> special place in our hearts as well <laughs> every time i leave my house i see your hotel so good to see you it reminds me of you I think you know just another thing, guys. So if you're struggling with direct, right, and on your website or you want some audit, we do audits, no cost, no obligations, right? If you go to simplehotel.com and just put in a request, we are happy to do an analysis, and and you can just there's no obligation. You can just implement those in your current solution, and you'll see results, right? So I want you to throw it out there. It's uh, www.simplehotel.com. Uh, feel free if you are looking for help, we'd be happy to just do a. check for you and and it's unbelievable a lot of these things can be fixed in your existing solution you don't even have to switch solutions for it great um thank you so much tarun and uh, melvin um i just request um, if if the audience has any questions so use the chat option um just moving on quickly um so uh, we've been uh, so the next question is for prithvish we've been talking about distribution uh, mix um in a few minutes back so just on the same line now prithvish if you want to throw more light on it so how can hotels leverage their distribution mix to drive more direct bookings through their own uh, website yeah thanks amun uh, well uh, i would be talking about you know three to four you know uh, tools 
that would actually help the hotels to leverage their distribution mix, uh, you know, in case uh, to drive more direct bookings uh, through their brand website. So number one, obviously it would be a booking in solution integrated with their brand website. Uh, you know, at this booking engine solution, as I have told earlier as well, it would definitely help in getting you the direct revenue. We don't have to give any kind of commission to any OTAs. It's your booking. It's coming directly from the customer. Okay. And it should be a robust, scalable and seamless booking engine that can be customized according to the hotelier's requirement. In fact, Using a booking engine will actually help the respective target audience or the customers and guests to do multiple reservations, as I have mentioned, from a single page. Multiple activities, running multiple activities or promotions. Uh, it has to be a fully secured and integrated with payment gateway solutions because that is something very important. And like it's basically what we do when we go to Amazon.com, like Tarun was saying. We, you know, we are trying to purchase a product. We need to give our, you know, either we are doing with uh, net banking or we are doing our, you know, with our credit card or debit card. So here you need to have a payment gateway solution as well integrated with your booking engine. And most importantly for today's generation, it has to be mobile. Thus, it is imperative to have a booking engine solution, which is mobile responsive as well. I can give you certain examples on why a booking in solution, why I'm talking about a booking in solution. Uh, I'll give you three examples rather. Uh, we have a client in Saudi. It's a very upscale hotel. Uh, this is a four star property in Riyadh. It is executive Olaya hotel. Okay. And we have seen like before the pandemic, they have a steady growth, like 24, 25% growth. But during the pandemic, the demand dropped significantly, you know, with the international traveling coming to a you know standstill. Even at that point of time, you know, they used to get around only one to two percent of total bookings through direct walk-ins at that point of time. Completely, this scenario completely changed. You know, last year they have implemented the booking in solution. Right now, currently, they have received almost 7% of all bookings through their brand website. And it is a huge revenue from 1% to 2%. You can actually analyze 7%. Okay. Uh, number two, what I would be talking about Google Hotel Ads. Right now, Google Hotel Ads, TripAdvisor, or Trivago. Right now, Google Hotel Ads is basically, you know, it's a direct source of revenue. They are not charging anything for the CPC and CPA model. They have done it free listing. So you can always avail Google hotel ads. It will absolutely generate direct booking to your, to your hotel. One of the important, another important aspect is what I found is a guest loyalty program. Okay. So hoteliers can think about this using a loyalty program tool clubbed with their booking in solution. And they can run various promotions via emails to their loyal guests, like sending promo codes, you know, to the guest. Because hoteliers need repetitive guests, not those guests who will come, you know, once and never to come back. So these these three are the, you know, what I believe can actually generate revenue. You know, these are the direct sources. Over to you, Aman. Over to you, Maya. Thanks. Thank you so much, Prithvish. I mean, um, th these were great valuable points for all the hoteliers to um, to have, you know, to think about and probably act on it as well. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we would again request if anybody has uh, any questions, uh, we would like to take them because we are already over time and we don't want to really keep all of you longer. It has been really a very uh, interesting discussion. I see I have a question here from one of the audience members, uh, Royston. So Royston asks, uh, this is for Tarun. Uh, so from your Amazon uh, analogy, I do follow that the booking engine and hotel website are the same thing, but how do we bring this change in mentality? 
because most hotels still stick with booking engine providers who may not offer website building. Yeah. Tarun. I think it's an interesting question that right? I was reading this nice book yesterday about, uh, it's uh, from a author that I respect a lot. Right? And it talks about, I think there is this uh, Galib ka two lines, right? Khayali to hai badal bhi sakta hai, right? Which is translated to just a thought, you can change it, right? So I think the, the real question is, See, every hotel has a different strategy, right? And uh, if direct is your strategy, then online needs to be a part of it. And, and you need to do everything to drive it. And if your hotel is strong with sales and corporate and stuff, and this is not your strategy, that's fine, right? So what you have to do is you have to define clearly what your business strategy is, what your goals are. And then everything else flows from that. And, you know, if you, if you, the benefit that all of us here on this call have is that, you know, we are all consumers in one way or the other, right? We can evaluate these solutions ourselves. It's not rocket science, right? We're not asking you to test drive a car or a Mercedes Benz and see that, you know, what safety features it has, right? You, you can go experience some of these products online and see if you have a seamless website booking engine, you know, do you believe it will add value to your customers? Do you, why not try it out and see if that works, right? And at the end of the day, you know, it's a matter of opinion, right? Uh, to me, a seamless experience matters a lot. We get, I get, especially with privacy and stuff, very lost when I go to a booking engine that's very different than the website. Something just uh, dissonance happens, right? You're in this nice experience. You're seeing a nice video. Now you go to the booking engine, like you woke me out of my dream or whatever, right? So I think a mind is easy to change if you really want it. And I think you need to have a business driver for it. If you're truly serious about driving direct, and if you look at these things from a consumer's perspective, It'd be very obvious choices in my mind that, you know, when you see some of these experiences, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense because we don't, we don't need to be a doctor or a lawyer to understand these things. It's just experience it on, on one of the sites and see whether your guests would like that kind of an experience. And if your guests would like that kind of an experience, go for it. If you don't think it's a big deal, then stick with what you have. Right? I, I don't know, Raisin, if I, if I answered your question, but, uh, See, fortunately, you know, what we are talking about here is marketing and uh, a lot of it is from knowing your customers. It all stems from there. And uh, we're all our own customers. All of us here have traveled in an airplane. All of us here have stayed at a hotel, right? So it's, it's not this, I don't have to get a medical degree to know that my pulse rate has to be so much. You know, you can experience these things and you can make up your own mind based on that would be my suggestion. Like, don't go with what somebody tells you, but just go see it. Do you like it? Just like how you test drive a car, right? Like you go sit in that Mercedes and you drive it. Ah, the pickup is nice. I like it, right? I mean, uh, that's how I would evaluate it. And if you don't think it is nice, then then stay away from it. Don't listen to anything that I'm saying, right? I mean, it's just an opinion at the end of the day. Absolutely, Tarun. Uh, Royston says, thank you very much, Tarun. So it definitely answers this question. Uh, so, uh, because we are on top of the hour, I would just now quickly like to invite all my panelists here to give a quick one sentence closing remark that could be the key takeaway for our uh, audience members and then we'll, uh, we'll close today's session. Um, so I'll start with you, Melvin. Uh, what is that one uh, thing that you think hotels should be doing? Uh, currently, I mean, just focus, that's what I was just said, because until and unless the global travelers uh, travel out there is no corporate movement currently so just focus on whatever you have uh, and uh, get through the occupancy uh, route itself that's what i would like to just concentrate the other hotels to do for this coming uh, months at least for next six months Down awesome road. awesome thank you thank you so much melvin uh tarun i just have one, one advice that you know i think uh and I think I'm repeating myself. I think running a hotel is one of the hardest things. And I honestly don't know why people choose to do this. I mean, you know, <laughs> your housekeeping is not working someday, one day your air conditioning is out. I mean, it's just, if I had to do it, I'd die, right? I think uh, not in pandemic, but but overall, I mean, understand that running a hotel is e not very easy and tech can help you there and invest in tech because as opposed to you know investing a lot in training, doing stuff again and again um, with the team, they're doing a hard job. Like your front desk is doing a hard job, your revenue teams are doing a hard job. And if you don't equip them with the right set of tools and we expect miracles out of them, you know, we have hotel chains, you know, one person managing revenue for 80 hotels, right? With no tools. How do you so my my only take is that you know, perhaps uh, long term, 
you know, pandemic, of course, budgets are tight, etc. Long term in good times, I think technology does help and does provide results and makes a huge impact to your bottom line. So at least, you know, at Simple Hotel, when we run our business, you know, we are looking constantly for automation. We don't like people doing monkey jobs. Nobody likes to do that. Uh, human beings are not designed to do that kind of stuff, right? Anything that is mundane, why do I have to take a phone booking and manually key it into the system and take the payment information from somewhere and attach it to it, right? So I, I don't know. I have a lot of, uh, my heart goes out to everybody who's in a hotel. I mean, I think the people who are serving tables probably do a very hard job. If I had to stand all day, my legs would start killing me and they do it with a smile, right? So the least we can do is give them the right set of tools so that, you know, they feel empowered to do their job well, which by the way they do, right? Uh, so anyways, uh, just uh, my two cents there, Nia. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Sarun. That was insightful. Prithvish, uh, your uh, parting closing statement here, please. Yes, sir. Uh, adding to Tarun's uh, you know, statement, uh, you know, parting statement, uh, I would like to add, gone are the days when hotels used to get you know reservations from offline food operators. This is not the time, actually. At the end of the day, technology is the key. And it not only, it's, I, I, I'm not talking about profitability. Right now, it's about sustenance. We need to sustain ourselves. So, as I said, and where there is a, you know, there are a lot of physical distancing that we talk about right now, correct? So, this is the time that you should be, you know, on your toes with the technologies. You know, it, it is the, you know, it, it is the, it is the need of the hour. So, this is my parting statement to my, you know, fellow colleagues over here. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Prithvish. Aman, you've been an amazing co-host today. Thank you so much for your support. I would want you to also please, uh, you know, share uh, your closing remark here with our audience. I wasn't uh, expecting that. I thought it's only for the speakers. <laughs> right. So, uh, um, well, uh, on top of my head, after listening to all the speakers, I would just say that, and um, to an amazing audience, uh, hoteliers, um, I would just say that don't um, consider technology as an alien for your business. I mean, consider that, uh, consider the technology as a catalyst to your business, and then you will see a different, you know, um, uh, transformation of hotel business happening for you. So, uh, but uh, thank you so much, Neha. And uh, I thank all the speakers for this amazing discussion. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Aman. I will actually take the liberty to give a closing statement myself. I've never done in the previous <laughs> webinars, but I do want to share something. And it, uh, you know, starts from where Tarun initially began uh, this discussion, you know, about collaboration and coexistence. I think as a fraternity, as people from the same industry, which we call the hospitality industry overall. So whether we are on the hotel side or on the tech side, we all definitely need to work together. So on certain, you know, when we talk professionally, we possibly are the providers and hotels are our customers. But when we look at the other side, we become the customers when we go and stay at these hotels, right? So uh, the, it is like a circle. It's a, like a never ending circle. And we definitely need to uh, look at coexistence and have a very collaborative approach. And obviously, um, we try and make life easier for hotels through the technology and the innovation that we keep. Uh, you know, building upon. So hope that this would be useful for them and, uh, you know, make daily lives easier uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And with that, uh, I would like to just say that this has been an amazing discussion. I'm really glad to be a part of it. I would like to, again, very warmly thank all my panelists here for the valuable insights and for sharing their knowledge and experience. It is an awesome opportunity for all of us to be here, uh, to, to hear from this panel and of course, big shout out to all the attendees for joining in. You've been a great audience today. Thank you everyone again. And we look forward to connecting again in more such future sessions. So uh, thanks again, everyone. Take care and stay thanks, safe. Everyone. Thanks really everyone. Really appreciate thanks. you guys being here. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. Stay safe and stay Bye -bye. healthy. Thank you everyone.